Now, through the process of the course, we're going to be showing you some additional archaeological stuff that has been found relative to the New Testament. But today, I want to just kind of take you through and show you some of the basic information about how reliable the New Testament is just based on the documents themselves. Но сегодня мы с вами поговорим о том, насколько можно сильно доверять вот Новому Завету, просто, просто исходя из документов существующих. Наверное, большинство из вас слышали о такой книге, как Код да Винчи. Написал ее Дэн Браун. This is a work of fiction. But the sad thing is that many people have read the book and think, wow, that really makes sense. Maybe the New Testament documents are not reliable. One of the things that uh, Dan Brown in this book suggests is that Jesus Christ actually married Mary Magdalene. <laughs> and that in marrying her, they had children. <laughs> And that eventually the Catholic Church came into existence and was formed based upon Christ, Mary Magdalene, and their children, and they were all involved in that. And they also, uh, he also suggests in the in the idea is that that uh, that Da Vinci put into some of his paintings some things that would actually help us understand that if they were just decoded. And of course, graphically, you can do some things today with graphics that sometimes can't be, that could not have been done back in those days. And supposedly he suggests that originally this figure here was on that side of Jesus. But that it was moved to this side of Jesus so that the head is leaning on Jesus' shoulder. And that everybody has assumed that that was John, the gospel, I mean, John, that was leaning on the shoulder of Jesus. But that it really wasn't. That was actually Mary, Mary Magdalene. So, that's one of his theories that he puts and promotes in the book. Another one of the big theories that is in his book, that he suggests in his book, is that the New Testament documents really were not written when people say they were. They were really written in about the third or fourth or fifth centuries. And they were written by the Catholic Church to deceive people into believing what we now have in our New Testament. 
обманывать и заставлять верить в то, что вот у нас сегодня в нашем Новом Завете мы читаем. Now then, how would you argue with that? Ну вот, что бы вы могли сказать в защиту своих верований? То есть как бы вы поспорили с информацией, которую вы только Существуют же кубранские... А кубранские, это, 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 это Ветхий Завет. Это папирус, который был найден, который датируется вторым веком нашей эры. Ну, картина уже не верна, потому что в это время тайны лечили, они возлежали, а тут нарисованы за столом. Well, uh, this picture is not correct to start with, because during the Lord's Supper they were laid down, and here they are sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. That's true, but with, would that prove anything? Would that prove the argument? You know, I, I agree with you that yes, that's yes, quite Would that prove the argument? You know, I agree with you that that's quite agree. Yes, yes, that Da Vinci didn't paint it right the да Vinci, ну, but, but their contention is whether he's laying down or, or not that da Vinci was trying to give us a code <coughs> saying that the New Testament documents were not really reliable и ну, если мы сможем этот код разгадать, то тогда мы поймем, что все, что написано в Новом Завете, это неправда. Alright, what we're going to do today is we're going to be trying to help you understand an argument that shows that the New Testament documents were not written in the 3rd, 4th or 5th century. Чему мы посвятим сегодняшний день? Тому, что мы постараемся с вами увидеть и рассмотреть Доводы в пользу того, что документы новозаветные были записаны не во втором, третьем, четвертом, пятом веках. There's a great deal of evidence to show that it wasn't, that it was written much earlier. То есть есть много доказательств того, что все эти документы были написаны гораздо раньше. Now, we need to take a look at, you know, the evidence for the deity of Jesus as furnished in the New Testament if we really want to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Вот мы должны рассмотреть доказательства того, что Иисус Христос является Сын Божий, исходя из Писания, того, что в Писании говорится об этом. Where are we going to learn that? Where, where, what, where are we going to get that information? Вот где нам взять эту информацию? Well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Now, Later in some of the other studies, we're going to show that there were uh, some other historical documents that that talked about Jesus. Today, I just want you to understand that if we were going to find out real, reliable information about Jesus, that's the documents that we would have to go to. Если мы хотим э, говорить о том, что Иисус действительно существовал, и вот все, что о нем написано, это правда, то мы должны обратиться к этим документам. Nobody can really go to any other place to really find real, reliable information about the life and teachings of Jesus. Никто, обратившись к другим документам, к другой информации, не сможет найти более полной информации об Иисусе и его жизни. Even when you look in books of history, for example, when you go to encyclopedias, or the writings of historians in Russia or Ukraine, if they write about Jesus Christ and his apostles and the New Testament church, they have to get their information from somewhere. Если они пишут об Иисусе Христе и его апостолах, то они должны где-то брать свою информацию. As historians, they go to what they consider to be very reliable sources for that information. И вот будучи историками, они обращаются к очень верным источникам информации, как они считают. Here's just a few of the books that I've listed that that are from noted historians. 
Вот буквально несколько книг, которые я перечислил, которые написаны очень известными историками. One of these historians is a man by the name of uh, uh, Will Durant. Один из этих историков это человек по имени Will Durant. He wrote a, I don't know how many volumes it has. I think I have uh, 14 or 15 volumes of it. Он написал историю и вот не знаю сколько на всего там у меня лично есть 14 или 15. But in his history of the world, one of his volumes is entitled Caesar and Christ. И вот uh, он написал, вот все эти томы называются «История мира», и один из томов uh, носит название «Цезарь и Христос». Will Durant is a historian. Will Durant – это история. He's not necessarily a believer in Christ. Он не является верующим человеком, человеком верующим во Христа. But when he gets his information for his book on Caesar and Christ, но когда он uh, обращается вот, uh, за информацией, His major source is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Which tells me something. He, as a historian, recognizes those books as historical documents. H.G. Wells. He wrote a uh, two-volume history of the world. And in it, he discusses Christ and the apostles and the early church. Where do you think he got his information for his history? About Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Max. And, and you can go to any of these historical guys, and ultimately, that's where they have to get their material. They may not come to the same conclusion that we do that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <coughs> But the point is, they do recognize those documents as historical documents. Uh, Arnold Toynbee, David Flusser, Sir William Ramsey, these are just some of the names of some of the historians that have included in their, their historical writings information about Christ. Now, some people might say, well, you know, these were books that were written much later on than what they were originally said to have been written. И вот некоторые люди могут сказать, что эти книги были написаны, скорее всего, намного позже, чем говорят, на самом деле были написаны. And the, a lot of the things written in there were probably just myths. И скорее всего, большинство из того, что там написано, это просто мифы. Well, one of the things I want you to understand about these documents, New Testament documents. Но что бы я хотел, чтобы вы понимали относительно этих документов, новозаветных документов. Is they are not written like myths. If you were writing a myth, how would you write it? Maybe something like yeah. Once upon a time, <laughs> there lived a handsome prince. From the country, and you make up a name. And he fell in love with a beautiful, beautiful girl. Her name was Cinderella. You know, but it's it's written not with a stamp of date and time and people that could be checked out. You need to first of all understand that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not written that way. They identify in their books 
historical people. For example, turn to the book of Luke. Luke begins his gospel by addressing it to dear Theophilus. And he says, since many people have tried to write historical or history of the certainties that have taken place among us, and some have handed it down to us, having seen these things from the beginning and proclaimed the story of Jesus. I thought too, after I had studied everything carefully from the beginning, Your Excellency, that I should write it down for you. Theophilus was evidently a very important man in the Roman Empire. They have found in the excavations at uh, Corinth some things that indicate that Theophilus was from there. И вот в Каринфе, в раскопках, нашли некоторые артефакты, которые говорят нам о том, что Феофил, скорее всего, находился именно в этом городе. But he's described as your excellency or the most excellent Theophilus. Но вот здесь он обращается к нему как достопочтенный Феофил. And Luke says, I've studied this out, I've checked this out, and I'm writing this down in an orderly way for you, so that you may understand the truth of, or what is true. И Лука пишет, что по тщательному исследованию всего сначала по порядку описал тебе, чтобы ты узнал твердое основание того учения, в котором был наставлен. Then, notice verse 5. Вот отметьте для себя пятый стих. Once upon a time. Жили, были. That way it starts out? Разве там так написано? No, no. During the time of Herod the Great, When he ruled Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He belonged to Abijah's section. Now, why in the world does he mention Herod the Great? Why would he mention Abijah? Because these were known people at that time. And he was saying to Theophilus, Theophilus, you can check this out. These are historical people. And I want you to understand that this is a historical event. We'll move on over to chapter 2 for a moment. He's talks, talking now about the birth of Jesus, and he says, about that time, Augustus Caesar sent an order to everyone in the empire that everyone must register. This first, it, first registration was first re, the first registration. It occurred while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Uh, sources have been found that show that Quirinius was governor at the time that this message was sent out to the people that they were going to have to go to the, back to their hometowns and register. But again, Luke doesn't say, once upon a time, But he says this happened in the time of Augustus Caesar. While Quirinius was governor. And so he pens this history in a, in a time that Theophilus could check it out. Now, 
if the Theophilus came along and said, ha, you don't have your facts correct. Quirinius was never a governor. <laughs> he probably would have rejected what Luke was saying and right. Now look at verse 3. I mean, chapter 3, verse Verses 1 and 2. Филипп, брат его, четвертовластником в Итурии и Драконицкой области, а Лисани, четвертовластником Абелинии. При первосвященниках Анни и Каяфе был благой Божий Иоанн и сын Захарии в пустыне. Ай-яй-яй, why in the world did he put in all these names? Да зачем все вот эти куча имен, непонятно. Some of them are hard to pronounce. Некоторые просто выговорить сложно. Well, the reason he's putting in these names is to connect them with history. And Theophilus would have known. There was a rule of Tiberius Caesar. External proof has shown that there was a man by the name of Pontius Pilate. И вот вне библейские источники тоже доказывают, что был такой человек по имени Понти Пилат. И Герод Антипа. And these other guys that are listed there. They were real characters. Люди, которые здесь перечислены, то есть они настоящие люди, они настоящие исторические персонажи. So that's one of the things that we need to understand is that the New Testament was written as accurate history. То есть мы должны для себя понимать, что Новый Завет был записан как очень конкретная и точная история. And people of that day, when they read the writings of Luke, и люди тех времен, когда они читали Евангелие от Луки, they could have proved that he was wrong about these historical characters. Если бы он писал неправду, всегда могли сказать, что такого не было. У нас, в нашей стране, это не наша история. So he was writing accurate history. То есть он, мы видим, пишет очень конкретную историю. Uh, you could go on a move to the book of Acts, and we're not going to spend time there, but the book of Acts will also assure us of some of that accurate history. <coughs> но вот можно также открыть книгу Деяний, но мы этого делать не будем, как бы, для того, чтобы сберечь время. Но опять же, и там тоже очень конкретная история. He writes about people like Felix and Festus. Там он говорит о тех, таких людях, как Феликс, Фест, and other historical characters. и другие исторические персонажи. And he does this partially just to pin that down to this history in time. И вот отчасти он это делает для того, чтобы привязать это все к истории и времени. So in Luke chapter 1, 2, and 3, you <coughs> see him, Luke, pin this down to history. Вот в Луки в первой, второй, третьей главе мы видим, что Лука непосредственно привязывает все, о чем говорит, к историческим событиям. Luke also mentions many persons, places, Также он упоминает events, много людей, события, weddings, различных свадеб, temples, каких-то храмов, valleys, ну, населенных, в смысле, равнин, mountains, rivers, гор, рек, feasts, Sit. All of these are in a historical setting and a geographical setting. Acts, the book of Acts, will trace the church from Jerusalem to Rome. And we're told that they were opposed, the early church was opposed by the Jewish hierarchy. Мы читаем также, что церкви противостояли правителям вот, в различной иерархии эм, правителей еврейских. But they were helped by Roman proconsuls like Sergius Paulus and Gallio. Но им помогали такие римские проконсулы, как э, Галлий и Сергий Павлов. Uh, Sergius Paulus. И э, Сергий Павлов. And Gallio. И Галлио. Я не помню. And so it just keeps on mentioning these historical people. 
And so these Gospels and Acts are rooted in history. It will talk about the threat of idolatry in Greece as recorded in Acts chapter 19. Также там говорится о угрозе для поклончества Греции. Это в Деяниях 19 главе. It will describe the religion of Christianity as being everywhere spoken against. Acts 28 verse 22. В 29 главе втором стихе мы читаем о том, что религия такая как христианство стала вот фактически бельмом на глазу у всех. And these again would be things that that Theophilus could check out and know. Опять же все те вот исторические so, here's the point. Historians recognize the history, accurate history, of the New Testament documents. The New Testament documents are not written as myths. They are history which can be verified. Они записаны как исторические события, которые можно проверить. И те люди, которые писали новозаветные документы, рассчитывают на то, что мы будем принимать их описание как истинное. Now, there's some extra or biblical writings that are not specifically connected in the New Testament that also suggest to us these being earlier documents and historical documents. These are connected with some people that we sometimes call early church fathers. И uh, это труды тех людей, которые мы называем отцы ранней церкви. We're not using the word father as the Catholics might use the word father. Мы используем вот слово отец не так, как католики пользуются этим словом. But we're using the term in relationship to early church writers who were, were very credible men. Но мы подразумеваем под этим словом писателей ранней церкви, которые были очень надежными людьми. These collection of writings were circulated between 90 and 160 A.D. In other words, these writers lived very close to the lives and time of the apostles. Some of these writers had actually sat at the feet of some of the apostles. And one of the things that you find in their writings is that they quote large portions of the New Testament. <laughs> Somebody has said that if you were to completely lose all of the text of the New Testament, Вот один uh, человек сказал, что если бы мы потеряли абсолютно весь текст Нового Завета, you could re reproduce it almost completely from the writings of these writers. Его можно практически полностью восстановить, пользуясь трудами отцов ранней церкви. So, the value, the twofold value in talking about people like this, и вот как бы, в чем же ценность того, чтобы говорить об этих людях? is first, their early date of writings shows that the New Testament books were written by the end of the first century. Plus, they show that the early Christians really highly respected the New Testament. И также они доказывают нам то, что ранние христиане очень доверяли тексту Нового Завета. Now, let's talk about a few of these guys. Давайте поговорим все-таки о вот этих ребятах. Guys or writings. То есть, ну, о них и о их трудах. 
The first one that we have listed there is Clement of Rome. He was living at the time of about 96 AD. And he wrote to the church in Corinth. And Clement's letter to the Corinthians is the only extant work from him which is expect, accepted as genuine, but it's accepted as genuine. In it, he tells of the martyrdom of Paul and Peter. But the significant thing about the writings of Clement of Rome that he quotes extensively from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Acts, as well as 1 Corinthians, 1 Peter, Hebrews, and Titus. Uh, 1 Peter, Hebrews, and Titus. Now, if he lived that early, and he quotes from those New, De New Testament documents, what does that tell us? Tells us that those documents were written earlier than what he had, uh, than him. So when the Da Vinci Code comes along and suggests that the Bible was written in about the 4th or 5th centuries, put it nicely, I'll say he's full of baloney. <laughs> but how could they be quoting extensively from something that was written after he died? That would be a miracle. <laughs> then we have another document called the Didache. It was described as the teachings of the Twelve. <laughs> it was written about 100. And it quotes from the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord's Prayer. It gives other instruction based on the materials in the Gospels. And it talks very accurately about the life of the historical Jesus. The next one mentioned is Ignatius. About 115. And he writes a number of historical facts and quotes from Matthew, John, and Acts. As well as many of the letters of Paul and James and 1 Peter. His martyrdom was around 135 A.D. And his martyrdom was reported by Polycarp, who was a disciple of John. And Polycarp says that Ignatius was thrown to the lions in the Colosseum at Rome. Tradition suggests that he was a disciple of Peter, Paul, and John. 
По традиции считают, что Игнатий был последователем Петра, Павла и Иоанна. And then the next one is Polycarp. Ну и следующий сам Поликарп. Polycarp was known to be a disciple of John. Известен он был как последователь Иоанна. Now, when I say disciple of John or disciple of Peter, Paul, and John, we all understand that they are disciples of Jesus Christ. Когда я говорю, что человек был последователем Иоанна или Петра, Якова, Иоанна или еще кого-то, то мы все понимаем, что в первую очередь они были последователями Иисуса Христа. But the great influence in their lives were some of these apostles that are mentioned. Но в их жизни больше какую-то часть влияния оказал какой-то из апостолов, которых мы упоминаем. He was known as a relentless devotee, or he was relentlessly devoted to Jesus Christ. И этот человек был известен как как человек, который полностью предан был Иисусу Христу. And to the scriptures. И Писанию. And quotes extensively from the scriptures. И в своих трудах он очень часто цитирует Писание. And his famous death indicates that he was a martyr because he was unwilling to say anything against Jesus Christ. И вот его смерть очень неизвестна в истории, и умер он за то, что не согласился говорить ничего против Иисуса Христа. We will see this a little bit in another study when we talk about church history, early church history. И вот мы с вами увидим это и в других наших изучениях, когда мы будем говорить с вами о истории церкви. And we will talk a little bit more about Polycarp then and some of the things that are said. <laughs> Now, if we just take these four guys, what does that tell us? That the scriptures are true. Well, that uh, all of that was written in the first century, not the fifth century. Right, and that's one of the best arguments against when people say, "Oh, well, these were later on written under the guise of the Catholic Church to deceive people." И это самый лучший аргумент, когда споришь с человеком, который говорит, что да, это все было написано вот там в четвертом пятом веке, чтобы людей обманывать. These were people that lived very near the time of Christ and quoted from them. Now, let me give you some other information. And I think we've included in this some of this printout that we've given to you. Again, this is for the purpose of showing us that <coughs> that these men wrote, and there were many men who wrote that were very close to the first century. Опять же, для чего? Для того, чтобы мы увидели, что все эти люди писали какие-то труды, и эти труды все были написаны вот очень близко к первому веку. And we have a lot of their writings, and you can see from this text how many quotes we have from these different ones. Justin Martyr. From his writings, we get 268 quotes from the Gospels. Из его трудов мы видим, что он 268 раз цитирует Евангелие. 10 from the book of Acts. 10 раз книгу Деяния. 43 from the Paul's apostle, uh, epistles. 43 раз цитирует послание Павла. 6 from the general epistles. 6 раз цитирует все послания. And 3 from the book of Revelation. И 3 раз цитирует Откровение. Although in his writings he uses like 266 Illusions from the Book of Revelation. И также в своих трудах он 266 раз вот пользуется аллюзией или ссылками на книгу Откровения. So just from him, we have 330. То есть если брать только его, то мы видим, что у нас 
Now I'm not going to try to go through every single one of these. You've got it and you can look at it. But the totals are amazing. <coughs> the total verses that are being used and quoted by these writers, Justin, Irenaeus, Clement of Alexandria, Origen, Tertullian, Hippolytus, and Eusebius. Вот если брать только труды этих известных отцов церкви, таких как Кустин, Кириней, Климент, Александрийский, Ориген, Тертулян, Иполит и Евсевий, 36,289. То всего цита 36,289. These men were familiar with the New Testament. They knew and quoted from the writings of the apostles. And they lived in such a time that would again prove that this was not a third or fourth or fifth century document. То есть гораздо раньше, чем третий, четвертый, пятый век, соответственно, что документы принадлежат раньше. That these no writings were known, well known, by the early church. Все их труды были очень известны в ранней церкви. Now, that's really as much as I wanted to say on these particular uh, writings. Что касается этих трудов, это вот все, что я хотел сказать. I just want you to make to make sure you understand the reason why we're talking about it. And it's because there will be skeptics that come along. And say, well, how do you know you have in the New Testament what you're supposed to have? Is the New Testament a an accurate historical document? You need to have confidence that it is a historical, great historical document. Now the next slide I want to show you is a comparison of a lot of the ancient documents and the copies that we have of those documents. People will sometimes ask the question and or, or say, well, you know, I know you have some some of the documents of the New Testament, but do you really have very old ones? Do you have reliable ones? And you know, and they start challenging and challenging и the вот New Testament. Очень часто люди говорят, ну да, есть у вас списки Нового Завета, ну да, есть у вас какая-то информация. А вы уверены, что это действительно вот так? Вы уверены, что это что-то не переименовано? И там можно ли доверять этим документам? И вот куча различных аргументов находится в пользу того, что не нужно доверять этим Заветам. Now, one of the questions I have, and I'll just ask you this. Но для меня вопрос, я задам его вам. Why do they challenge the New Testament? Зачем вообще сомневаться в истинности Нового Завета? Well, if you doubt the Bible or the authenticity of the Bible, then you don't have to listen to God. Yeah, that's right. That's the point. People don't want to listen to God. So if they can just push it aside and say, ah, it's not even a reliable document. Then they don't have to be answerable to God. It's interesting to me that almost no other book in ancient writing is challenged that way. And that's why I wanted to show you something that to me is a powerful, powerful evidence again of how we know we have the accuracy of the New Testament. On this chart you will see that we have the listing of several authors. 
the writings, for example, of Julius Caesar. He wrote between 140, 144 B.C. Now, the earliest manuscripts of the writings of Julius Caesar is 900 A.D. That's a thousand years later. And they only have ten copies. How many people do you hear of saying today, you know, the writings of Julius Caesar are really not reliable? They don't do that because they don't need to argue with Julius Caesar. He doesn't ask them to change their lives. The New Testament writers do. Jesus Christ does. So they're intimidated. By the writings of the New Testament. Это их встревоживает те труды Нового Завета. Плато. Платон. Hmm. Great philosopher. Huh? Замечательный философ. Lived, you know, 427 to 347 BC. Жил в 427 по 347 год до нашей эры. Well, are people rising up today and saying, well, do we really have the writings of Plato? И вот есть ли люди, которые говорят, а уверены ли мы, что то, что у нас сейчас есть, это действительно труды Платона? No, they will quote Plato. Нет, Платона цитируют на каждом углу. Look at what a wise man he was. И говорят, какой мудрый человек был. And yet, the earliest copies of Plato write, Хотя, uh, writings are 900 AD, 1200 years. Ранняя копия его трудов датируется 900 годом нашей эры, а это 1200 лет. And there's only seven copies. But you see, people aren't being called by Plato to really change their lives. I'm not going to go through all of these, but you've got the writings of Tacitus, Herodotus, Sophocles, Euripides, Demosthenes, Aristotle, Aristophanes, and you've got all these writings and very large gaps between when the original writing was and the earliest copy. Yet people don't challenge it. Here's the writings of Homer. Listen. Now, there's a lot more evidence for Homer. Homer, you have written about 900 B.C. The early copy, earliest copy is from about 400 B.C. That's only 500 years difference. And, whoa, there's quite a few copies. Uh, 643 copies. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, we, we probably really know we have the writings of Homer. Accurately. But look at the New Testament. Written between 40 and 100 A.D. Probably the last one was written about 96. The earliest copy that we have of any of those writings is about 125. About 25 to 30 years <laughs> after the original writing. And I have up here that there have been 24,000 <coughs> copies that have been found are parts of. And actually today, that number is even higher. 
Но вот если на сегодняшний день, то есть это немножко устарелая цифра, то сейчас еще больше. Because they continue to find. Потому что корпины продолжают находить. Oh, but we can't believe that. Но уж как поверить этому? Why there's no real evidence for that? У нас нет свидетельств относительно того, что Новый Завет есть. Really? It's amazing how people argue and are unwilling to look at the evidence of what we have. Then, not only that, and you will need to know these for a test, we have some major documents that we call codexes. These codexes are essentially complete copies of the New Testament dating back mm, to the about the third to fourth centuries. The first one is the Codex Sinaiticus. It was from about 350 AD. It is presently located in the British Library. Used to be in the British Museum. До этого его хранили в Британском музее. But it's been moved to the British Library now. Но сейчас его переместили в Британскую библиотеку. The reason it's called the Codex Sinaiticus is that it was found and discovered <coughs> at a monastery <coughs> that is in the Sinai Peninsula <coughs> not too far away from what some have claimed to be the Mount Sinai. But when, when, when scholars began to translate the New Testament and other parts of the Bible, they will rely heavily upon some of these documents that were, that were found. <coughs> This one happened to be found by a man by the name of Constantine Tischendorf. In about 1859. Now our time is up, so I'm going to stop right there today. And when we start tomorrow, we're going to start here and continue to talk about some of these other major codexes. I hope that you just understand today that there is a powerful amount of evidence that what we have as New Testament is exactly what we should have. То, что у нас есть, те свидетельства Нового Завета, которые у нас есть, они действительно заслуживают доверия. So, we'll stop there. See you.